Hi, and welcome to the DE Physical Education Flip Learning videos. The respiratory system, structure of the lungs. Gaseous exchange. Gaseous exchange is concerned with the following. Getting oxygen in air into the lungs so it can diffuse in the blood and be transported to the cells in the body. The removal of carbon dioxide from the blood. The terms partial pressure and diffusion are used when describing the gaseous exchange process. Quite simply, all gases exert pressure. Oxygen only makes up a small part of air. It therefore exerts partial pressure. Since gases flow from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure, it is important that the air moves from the alveoli to the blood and then to the muscles. The partial pressure of oxygen of each needs to be successfully lower. Key terms you should know. Concentration, diffusion gradient. Often referred to as the concentration gradient, it explains how the gases flow from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. The steeper the gradient, the faster the diffusion occurs. Gases exchange in the alveoli. The partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli is higher than the partial pressure of oxygen in the capillary blood vessels. This is because oxygen has been removed by the working muscles so its concentration in the blood is lower and therefore so is its partial pressure. The difference in partial pressure is referred to as a concentration difference gradient and the bigger the gradient the faster the diffusion will be. Oxygen will diffuse from the alveoli into the blood until the partial pressure is equal in both. Diffusion pathways. The oxygen pathway it goes from the alveoli into the blood then into the muscles. Carbon dioxide goes from the muscles back into the blood and then back into the alveoli. The movement of carbon dioxide occurs in the same way but in the reverse order. The time the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the blood entering the alveolar capillaries is higher than in the alveoli. So carbon dioxide diffuses in the alveoli from the blood until the pressure is equal in both. As you can see from the table below, this breaks down the percentages of gases that are oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen and water vapour. Gases exchange at the muscles. The partial pressure of the oxygen has to be lower at the tissue than in the blood for the diffusion to occur. As such, in the capillary membranes surrounding the muscle, the partial pressure of oxygen is 44 mg of mercury and is 100 mg of mercury in the blood. The lower partial pressure allows oxygen to diffuse from the blood into the muscle until equilibrium is reached. Conversely, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the blood is lower than in the tissues. So again, diffusion occurs and carbon dioxide moves into the blood and is transported to the lungs. As you can see here, this is a diagram of the partial pressure in the alveoli. You can see as it goes from the alveolus into the cells. Regulation of the pulmonary ventilation during exercise. There are three factors involved in regulation of pulmonary ventilation during exercise. Neural control, chemical control and hormonal control. Neural and chemical regulation of the pulmonary ventilation. Pulmonary ventilation simply means breathing. Neutral control involves the brain and the nervous system and the chemical control is concerned with the blood acidity. Both of these work together as a team to regulate breathing. When blood acidity is high, the brain is informed and it sends impulses through the nervous system to increase breathing. The pulmonary ventilation is breathing and in the nervous system controls this automatically through two systems, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic system. Breaking it down. The sympathetic nervous system prepares your body for exercise, so it will increase breathing rate, whereas the parasympathetic nervous system will do the opposite and lower the breathing rate. The respiration centre is located in the medulla oblongata of the brain, the rate and depth of breathing and uses both neural and chemical control. All increased concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood stimulates the respiratory centre to increase respiratory rate. The respiratory centre has two main areas, the inspiratory centre, ins responsible for inspiration and expiration, and the expiratory centre, which stimulates the expiratory muscles during exercise. The inspiratory centre sends out nervous impulses via the phrenic nerve to the inspiratory muscles to cause them to contract. This stimulate acts for approximately two seconds, then the impulse stops and a passive expiration occurs due to the elastic recoil of the lungs. Breaking it down, the respiratory centre responds mainly to changes in blood chemistry. During exercise, blood acidity increases as a result of the increase in the plasma concentration of carbon dioxide and an increase in lactic acid production. 
These changes are detected by the chemoreceptors. These are found in the choroid artery and the aortic arch. They send impulses to the inspiratory centre and increase ventilation until the blood acidity has returned to normal. To achieve this, the respiratory centre sends impulses down the phrenic nerve. This stimulates more inspiratory muscles such as the, such as the sternoclimastoid, scalene and pectoralis minor. As a result, the rate, depth and rhythm of the breathing will also increase. Other factors that affect neural control of breathing. Mechanical factors, the proprioceptors are sensory receptors located in the joints and the muscles that provide feedback to the respiratory center to increase breathing during exercise. The baroreceptors, a decrease in blood pressure detected by baroreceptors in the aorta and the, and the carotid arteries result in an increase in breathing rate. Stretch receptors, during exercise the lungs are also stretched more. Stretch receptors prevent overinflation of the lungs by sending impulses to the expiratory center and then down the intercostal nerve to the expiratory muscles so that expiration occurs. Control of ventilation is broken down into the following diagram. These three will link to the inspiratory center. This will then go to the respiratory center found in the medulla oblongata. This will go off to the pharynx nerve, which controls the diaphragm and external intercostal muscles, which will increase our breathing rate. The medulla obligata will also control the intercostal nerve, the abdominals and the intercostal muscles to increase expiration. At the same time, the stretch receptors will prevent overinflation of the lungs by sending impulses to the expiratory center, which sends it back to the medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata is the key thing to controlling our breathing. Order of neural and chemical control for inspiration and expiration. The receptors send a signal to the medulla oblongata, which then sends it to the phrenic nerve, which sends a signal to the diaphragm and external intercostal muscles. For expiration, the receptors again send an electric impulse to the medulla oblongata, then to the intercostal nerve and the abdominals and intercostal muscles. Hormonal regulation of pulmonary ventilation during exercise. Adrenaline is a natural stimulant made in the adrenal gland of the kidney. Adrenaline is a natural stimulant made in the adrenal gland of the kidney. It is transported in the blood and affects the nervous system. Adrenaline is often referred to as the body's activator and is released to respond to exercise. Just before we start exercise, the brain sends impulses to the renal glands, which respond and pump adrenaline in the blood in anticipation of an increased need for oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange. As a result, breathing rate increases in preparation for exercise and the demand to take in more oxygen and remove carbon dioxide. Key terms you should know. The cliella. The cliella are microscopic hair-like projections that help to sweep away fluids and particles. The chronic obstruction pulmonary disease, or COPD. The chronic and deliberating disease, and this is named for a collection of diseases such as encena. The main cause of emphysema is smoking. It is a long-term progressive disease of the lung that causes shortness of breath. Impact of poor lifestyle choices on the respiratory system. There are many lifestyle choices we make, such as what we eat, how we exercise, how much alcohol we drink, or whether we choose to smoke. Smoking has the biggest effect on the respiratory system. It can cause irritation of the trachea and the bronchii. It reduces lung functions and increases breathlessness caused by the swelling and narrowing of the lung airways. Cigarette smoke damages the cell lining of the trachea, bronchiole and bronchiolus. These tiny cells have microscopic hair-like cilia on their surface which help to brush away mucus out of the lungs. When they are damaged, excess mucus builds up and the lung passages which leads to a smoker's cough. Smoking can damage the alveoli as their walls break down and join together forming larger air spaces than normal. This reduces their efficiency of gaseous exchange, which also increases the risk of COPD. Smoking also affects oxygen transported as the carbon monoxide from the cigarettes combines with the hemoglobin in the red blood cells much more readily than oxygen. This reduces the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood, which increases breathlessness during exercise.